you actually did to to transform yourself like what are some of the things that 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 you do in your life and that you did when you were struggling that got you to the position where you are right now where you can be of so much service to you know this community and your community all all, mm -hmm. all your followers that would be awesome to share yeah so basically my whole story was uh and I think that's kind of the focus of today too, is about taking your, your setbacks, your challenges, the uh, biggest struggles in your life and, and taking that energy from that and then using it as good. So long story short, the, all the pain I went through, the anxiety, the depression, the suicidal um, ideations all the time and the self-esteem issues, the relationship issues, which Kyle talked about, all those problems, all those things were back when I was going through them were the worst things possible. Like there was absolutely nothing in my mind good about those types of things. And while I'm in the midst of it, going through all this stuff, it's just like the worst place to be. But at the same time, there's always that silver lining in the clouds. And it's actually a good, it's kind of a good theme for what we're all facing right now with the coronavirus, this COVID-19. And, and even me, like you never reach a certain point where like, you know, you overcome a bunch of issues and then your life is forever good after that point. Everything's easy. You just like hit a certain point and then, you know, life's great after that. There's always going to be struggles. There's always going to be things popping up. So even, um, you know, three, four weeks ago, whatever this thing really started kicking in, it was like, um, you know, I'm, I'm still like resisting it. I'm still facing, I'm still, because there was so many things like right now we're in the middle of uh, April and there was so many plans that I had at the end of March and then so many plans that I had in the beginning of April. And then even like right now around this period, where, where I had to cancel all those things, delay those things, or like put them off indefinitely for who the hell knows when we're going to get back to like normalcy. So like even going through all that stuff, I'm like resisting it all and like trying to push back on it. And I'm going through like my whole internal struggle. Like, of course I was fine. Like wasn't physically going to be hurt. I wasn't, you know, going to be emotionally crippled for the rest, but there was still an internal battle and I was going through a lot of stuff. And even, you know, the past couple of weeks, it was like still, I was kind of pushing back on it, but at some point, I kind of just had to like surrender to it and accept what was going on. I think it's a good, I think it's a good strategy for a lot of people just to kind of not, not go away and, and forget about all this stuff that's going on, but accept it and surrender to the fact that you can't really change what's going on. You can't change the world. You can't change the governor. You can't change the president. You can't change all the stuff and all the mandates they're having and you know, all the stuff that's going on, but what you can do is accept it and you can go with it. And my point is, is no matter what you face in life, no matter what you're going through, there's always going to be a silver lining in there. And I think, I think we actually talked about this too, a few weeks ago, Kristen is like coming out of this whole thing better than what we went into it. It's actually a good sort of wake up call and a way of changing our lives and kind of like the way we're heading, even though this isn't necessarily what I wanted. It's not the way I predicted or wanted things to, to turn out. And I had to cancel a lot of things and there's some things I won't be able to go back to. It also has made me face like in the last couple of weeks, I've been doing a lot more meditation, a lot more like self-reflection and looking in instead of um, trying to, to change a lot of this material world out here. And like, you know, like, like, like almost like control things like I was doing very good in and like, you know, pretty successful last like few years or whatever and doing a lot of stuff materially it's like made me look more inwardly and kind of see the happiness and the good that's, that's, coming from here and the, the real important stuff is like in your heart that's where the the, the love is found the, the goodness is found all that acceptance of yourself it's it's forced me even though I didn't want to do it the last few weeks to look more inward and actually see the real meaning And I think like in a few weeks or a few months whenever this thing kind of starts to settle I'm going to have a different perspective and a more um, appreciation and like gratitude for things so it's the same thing with, with what I faced 10 years ago. It's just in a different way of like overcoming that and then becoming better because of it. So you would say like, what I heard you say was that this, this radical acceptance of what is right. Like the non resistance to what is allows you the opportunity to go into it and to grow from it and grow through it. So that's like, I feel like that's like a great piece of wisdom for all the people who are listening is like, no matter what's going on in your life, whatever kind of resistance you're up against, it's like that friction, but it could also be sandpaper, right? Like it could, yeah. it could help polish all your rough edges. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, what, what do you, um, like, what are your meditation practices? Just for the people who are here, like, what are, what are some of your favorite meditations? Some of your favorite um, teachers, like the, 
the people who who inspired your journey? Uh, that's actually, I think when I first hopped on the call, you guys, it sounded to me, I'm not sure if it was, but it sounded like Dispenza was going on. <laughs> was that Joe Dispenza? That, uh, that <laughs> is the music that yes, Joe Dispenza the music that he uses. The background okay. is by a guy named Todd Norian, but it's ah, from okay. his uh, okay, yeah. present moment meditation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I love, uh, and actually Kristen introduced me to this, like probably a year and a half ago was, was Dr. Joe Dispenza. And I haven't, haven't even heard of him. Um, before then, but I love Joe Dispenza. I do, uh, I do his all, all his meditations, the present moment ones, the, the tapping into the higher states. Um, the hell are they called? Reconditioning the body to a new mind, or reconditioning the mind to a new body. Uh, so I love all his. I love um, Bruce Lipton has a couple. Um, mm -hmm. Brian Weiss has a few that I've been playing around with the last couple of weeks. I just read his book. Um, there's so many good ones though. I mean, there's, there's a ton and I'll play around with some. The Dr. Uh, Dawson Church has one where you tap into like this heart coherence and you have um, heart math and you can actually set up to, to see like how much of the heart coherence you have. It's only like a 20 minute one. I like the shorter ones because honestly, I feel like I get more done and, and dispenses are kind of longer. So um, I, I do those often, but I do like the shorter ones too, just because I feel like I'm a little more focused in like a shorter period of time. Whereas the longer ones, it's like, I can kind of lose focus. Sometimes I'll even fall asleep if I'm like tired and some of the, you know, dispenser ones, but they're all, they all have benefit to be honest. They're all, as long as you're like in the moment and, and, um, focusing on like one thing you can, you can have benefit doing anything. And sometimes I won't even use, um, like a guided meditation. I won't even use like a CD or MP3. I'll just sit there and focus on my breathing for like 10 or 15 minutes and kind of get my own heart. I don't, I don't even hook myself up to the, th I have the thing, which is really cool, the heart math, but I won't even hook up. I'll just kind of tap into that thing for like 10 or 15 minutes and I feel great afterwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get yeah. that thing right there too. <laughs> it's cool though. I love yeah, that. I love cool. the heart math thing. All right. So I want to ask you a couple of questions too. So if you take it back to that time in your life when you were specifically struggling and you were broken, did something specific happen? To, to kind of cause you to go into this trend and you know this journey um and then my second question would be like how how are you doing all these things today like how are you meeting all these incredible people are they coming to you or what's what's happening <laughs> um so i'll answer the second part because it's just it's real easy so the second part of of meeting these people getting these guys like wim hof uh i had bruce lipton on the show which is cool um you know, some of these big guys that are like really hard to reach, it's, it's just a matter of honestly building yourself up. So anybody can start a podcast. When I did it uh, five, I don't know, five or six years ago, I started the thing. The first like six months to a year was really tough getting anybody on the show because there's no credibility there. There's, you don't have a lot of um, episodes to show people like, oh, this is how we do it. There's not a lot of um, like social proof there. So people are like, you know, who the hell is this guy? Just, you know, he got like a hundred followers or whatever. Like no one's really li like, you know what I mean? Like as far as a podcast goes, you need to have like tens of thousands of followers to really start to get like some of the bigger names, but um, you just keep hacking away at it and you just keep plugging away and doing it. And eventually like you have like one big guess and then a couple and then a couple. And, and then once you have those, it's like the social proof to get the other people come so much easier. Like once you have, you know, Wim Hof on your show, getting say Gretchen Rubin on the show was like super she sees that he came on the show and she's like oh this guy must be pretty decent so <laughs> you give him a shot and then it's that easy because you, you know you start to build a following and stuff people listen and they um it's basically like free exposure for them and, and podcasts are cool interviews are cool too because it's long form so it's not like you're going on like say um you know like Fox or CNN or one of these shows for like a two minute snippet and you can't really get much out in the podcast, you can say whatever you want and we go for an hour. Sometimes you go for an hour and a half or even two hours for the long ones. Um, so it's pretty cool. But to the, to the first <clears throat> question was, <clears throat> excuse me, the first question about what was it going through it and, and how did that yeah, actually so basically, look? Basically when you were, you know, you, you were at this point in your life where you were, you know, rock bottom. What took yeah, you okay. out of that? Like, how okay, did you yeah, yeah. Out of that? Did it just magically happen? Or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I you wish know? it did, yeah. Because you're killing it now, but you, yeah. were, you were potentially suicidal at one point. So where, where do you, how do you do that? Like, how do you go from there to there? All right. So I'll get real, uh, like, deep for, for a moment. So I'm sitting on a couch one day, and this is like 10 years ago at um, my father's house, and I'm sitting there, and we, we just had finished a show. It was like Sons of Anarchy or something. I put this in the book too. And I'm 
literally sitting there and I don't remember, and this is kind of dates the, sh the time period too. Cause it was like when Sons of Anarchy first came out, it was like, you know, fresh on TV. I'm sitting there watching the show and I remember it being a good show. I just don't remember anything about it. And I don't remember what had happened, but I'm sitting here at like the end of it. And just in my head thinking like of all the ways I could kill myself, because that's how, that's how depressed I was. I'm sitting there thinking like, you know, maybe I can grab a rope or maybe I can, get a gun or maybe I can go off a bridge and like just all these crazy thoughts and I'm sitting there on the couch and it's like over and over and over and I'm obsessing about it and I had had anxiety uh leading up until that point I had some depression but at that point it like really hit me like this is actually pretty dangerous it's not just like a you know innocuous depression here or like a, a gloom or sadness it's actually like really bad and um I ended up that day putting my foot down like kind of jumped off the couch and was like I got to figure out how to stop this because something really bad is going to happen here or like, I'm just going to completely go crazy and not be able to. So I put my foot down that day and, and researched like everything under the sun. This was pretty much when um, Google and, you know, all those search engines were, were not brand new, but they were still sort of in their infancy. So there wasn't like all this great information that we have today, you know, Dispenza wasn't around as far as I know. Um, Bruce Lipton wasn't putting as much content out and you know, all these people that we can look to now for so much great wisdom, they weren't really around back then. And I'm just, I, but I do remember that there was a few things, you know, I'm, I'm searching around just trying everything. There was a few things that stuck out and even a couple of the things that stuck out back then, that's like all I needed to give me hope that I was going to find a solution and I wasn't going to quit. I wasn't going to give up. Um, and I just kind of stuck with that. I took the tiniest thread of hope and, and, in my mind decided that I wasn't going to give up and I was going to try everything possible to figure this thing out. And it, it didn't happen overnight, but it did slowly start to get better. Once I started implementing some of these different strategies and I tried a bunch of things that didn't work, but I did find, you know, a number of things like 10, 12 different things that I just slowly like meditation was one of them. Yoga was one of them. Um, magnesium was one of them. Hypnosis the self-hypnosis, which is incredible. It actually, self-hypnosis is very similar to meditation too. And I kind of like it too, which I never even knew about like Dispenza, like I said, until about a year and a half ago. But when you're doing self-hypnosis, it's very similar to the guided meditations of like tapping into a different state of mind, different consciousness, reprogramming the mind, putting all like the good inputs and, and uh, all the codes, so to speak, into your, into your subconscious brain, subconscious mind. And then all of a sudden your reality starts to change. You don't even necessarily... Um, you can't actually, in fact, you can't say, you know, snap your fingers and say, I want to be happy. I want to be, um, you know, grateful. I want to have energy and feel good today. You can't really snap your fingers and do that because that doesn't, the subconscious mind is what controls your feelings and emotions, but a good way to reprogram that and have those types of feelings and emotions is to use something like self-hypnosis, self-hypnosis, or even a meditation where you can tap into that and get into this incredible state of mind where you're super relaxed and super suggestible and then you reprogram in all these great affirmations and things that you want to have presented in your life and that was one of the big ones with self-hypnosis um there's so many other strategies but the key the key for me when when it all started to change was that day on the couch when i realized that something had to change or i was probably going to end up dead you know fairly soon so it was like I needed to do this and nothing was going to stop me. Once I had my mindset on figuring out the solution, I didn't know how long it was going to take. I didn't know how much struggle I was going to go through, but I knew I was going to find the solution. You know, whether it killed me or not, I was going to go for it. So you would say that like mind over matter was the beginning of the journey for you, right? It was yeah. a, a mental shift. And I love I love that you use so much of that, that mind science to transform your life. And I think so many of us have like a similar story where it was like this, this shift that happened inside, we started to pay attention to what was happening inside of us as opposed to what was happening outside of us. Yeah. That, that's, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's true. And like I said, I kind of, um, ever since then it's always, and that's the book's called elite mind. Ever since then I had that philosophy of, of, and like, like we talked about before too, like what I wanted to kind of express the most in this call was once you, once you overcome something like that, you overcome depression or your anxiety or the pain. And by the way, I was getting panic attacks three to four times a week. So 
anyone who's ever had a panic attack, it's like the worst feeling possible. It's terror. It's, you know, all this anxiety that you can't control. It, it takes over your mind and you just don't know what the hell's going on. And then all you get all these symptoms of it too. You get the, the butterflies in the stomach. You get the crazy obsessive thoughts. You get the sweaty palms. You get the shaky legs sometimes. Sometimes you get a feeling of like freezing and being so cold. You get all these crazy symptoms that you can't control. And um, it's just like, for anyone who's had a panic attack, you know how, how bad it is, but to get one like over and over and over again, it's just like the worst thing possible. So overcoming all of those things, it's like, you almost get like a superpower. You get this, um, when you overcome all the, when you overcome anything in life, not just anxiety or, or panic or depression or whatever, but when you overcome a major struggle, it's almost like, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a video game in a lot of ways. You're, you like boost your character up to the new level and you become like this, more empowered person you have this like superpower to then go on and tackle whatever else comes your way and um it's it's pretty interesting how that works and how as we evolve and we grow become more enlightened it, it life becomes a lot easier not like you're ever going to not face any struggles like i mentioned a moment ago you know you're going to go through everything that you know life has to offer but you become better equipped to deal with it and then when something like say this crazy coronavirus pandemic pops up it's like you know, this is nothing. I did whatever. I did the panic and depression 10 years ago. And then so many other things since then that, you know, I've, I've overcome too. And I'm sure you guys have done the more you overcome it. So there's two types of people that, that go through the world. And I think pretty much everybody in this call right now is the second type of people. The first type of people they'll they'll face life, they'll overcome life, they'll do whatever it is, but they won't learn from the lessons that they're supposed to learn from. They won't grow from the events that they're supposed to grow from. And they miss out on evolving and getting to that next level. But the types of people on this call, the, the type of pe types of people listening are the second type of people that actually learn from their experiences. They grow each time something happens. They become more evolved, more enlightened, and they gain these superpowers over time. Like the, like the video game character, they become up, 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 like on these levels. And then eventually, you know, when we all pass on to the next, um, to the next life or whatever, is going on we're like at that place that we need to be because we've learned all these lessons throughout life that we had to learn totally i actually i have names for those people i call them shifters, <laughs> shifters and resistors right like we've got yeah. people who are like oh, I've this lesson in my life let me show you through it resistor so that that's no, how do you know how to get there yeah. awesome. um love it that's such a cool name <laughs> Kyle, you got another question, I know. Oh, yeah. No, so I love the – you can hear me, right? I love the, um, the subconscious reprogramming stuff. You said there's specific meditations. So just do you mind mentioning one for our group or somebody that they can search and kind of plug into? Um, as far as the meditations, <clears throat> like I said, I would go with, with Dispenza. I would go with Lipton. I would go with uh, Dr. Dawson Church is another great one. Um, you know who else I like is uh, Panash Desai, who uh, I don't know if you guys heard of him, but I just had him on the podcast a few weeks ago, and I love this guy. I, I hadn't even heard of him until um, his like assistant was doing like a book tour, and they reached out to me, and I had this guy on the show. I didn't even know who he was um, until I interviewed him, and then afterwards, I'm, like I'm doing the interview, I'm like, this guy is incredible. Like I was talking, like, he was just like saying incredible stuff. Kind of reminded me of Dispenza in a lot of ways, um, but he's saying all this incredible stuff. And then I looked him up afterwards. I'm like, this guy is awesome. I watched like 20 of his YouTube videos and did all like, he's so cool, but he's another guy. Like I really like listen to his stuff, uh, especially recently. And then as far as like the, the hypnosis stuff, the my, one of, you can do a ton, a ton of great ones out there too, as well. But one of my favorites is, um, uh, mind fit hypnosis. It's Dr. Andrew Dobson. He's a guy from, I believe New Zealand. He's got like this cool accent and he, uh, he's got incredible. There's like, I think his MP3s are like 10 or 15 bucks online. I've gotten a ton of them over the years, but um, he has a, a lot of really good ones too. And that's like his, his hypnosis sessions are like 20 minutes long. So they're super easy too. the same as meditation. They get you into that meditative like state and then you just sit there and, and listen to what he's saying. They're, they're pretty cool. Awesome. Uh, so one book that you would recommend for our group and then one, any bit of advice to just a seat of growth for our collective. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many great books man but uh you what know. about your own book <laughs> yeah yeah hold on i got it right here elite mind cool i wouldn't i here it is elite mind i wouldn't actually um 
I wouldn't recommend if I had to choose one book though, I, I can't say my own. I'll have to say something else. Um, I would say medical medium, which I know Kristen knows I'm a huge fan of, of the medical medium and his stuff. And I've actually, I've used, I've been on his diet strictly. I was on his diet for about a year. And then the last like year and a half, maybe like year and eight months or something like that. I've been doing his diet overall. I kind of cheated a little bit on it. Like I'll drink a little alcohol here and there. Um, I'll have a lot more meat than what he prescribes, what he recommends. But um, overall, I follow a lot of his stuff. I just did my celery juice right before the call. And I do his uh, heavy metal detox every day. I've been doing that for a year and a half. And mm. it's incredible. Like, like the juicing, all his fruits and veggies that he recommends, all his, you know, like herbs and stuff throughout the day. It's really incredible, especially a time like this too, where we're all kind of facing this unknown thing that's going on with the coronavirus. Like we don't know exactly... I have my theories on how bad it really is, which, you know, I've talked about at length at many in social media posts and stuff like that. But uh, we don't know exactly how bad it is. But the, the thing that we can do, we can all do right now is take care of ourselves, boost our immune system, take care of our health and eat healthy. And again, I think this is for many people, I think people are going to get all kinds of different benefits or potential benefits from what's going on. But I think one of the biggest benefits for many people is the lifestyle that they have and the diet that they have. I think it's going to wake a lot of people up to, uh, to eat healthier, live healthier mm. so that they can protect themselves. They can protect their families. Cause you know, you're, you're treating your body like crap for so many years and then something like this pops up and it's like the, the weakest, most compromised people are the ones being most affected. And there's some things that you can't control. Some things are genetic and you know life happens sometimes you get whatever kind of disease or you get whatever kind of thing pops up but the things that we can control there's a lot of people that have neglected those areas and i think they're going to be i think their mindset for a lot of people is going to change after this so that they start eating healthier they start doing the right things you know exercising working out stop smoking like those types of things and i think again that can be one of the benefits that that people get out of this and i love i love that you brought it to nutrition because i think it's such a pivotal part not even just like for what's going on right now but for our mental health as mm -hmm. well like what we what we consume in terms of content in terms of you know thoughts and yeah. also nutrition it all has an impact on how we show up in our lives so thank you so much for addressing that because i think it's so important and i, I love, love the medical medium stuff too <laughs> yeah. i think i love this stuff yeah it's incredible yeah and i think um I, like you, you made a good point too. It's not even just like what we consume. There was a good, um, it was like a good meme or something I saw a few weeks ago where it was like, not, it's not even just the food that you consume. It's everything. It's every thought that you hear. It's every, it's all the information that comes in. It's, it's, of course, it's the, it's the diet. Of course, it's the exercise. Of course, it's the sleep. It, but it's also all the other things that you're consuming throughout the day and all the other things you don't even realize you're consuming throughout the day. We're all being programmed. We're all being conditioned by a certain thing every single day, every, every commercial that you see, every advertisement that you see, every show that pops on, every movie that you watch, we're all facing all these things. And we're facing a lot more too than say our ancestor did, uh, you know, 50, hundred thousand years ago. Like there was not, billboards and signs and crazy like messaging and programming like that we're constantly bombarded with like we go on tv and we watch a program for an hour and then there's a bunch of commercials and there's so many different like stimuli that's hitting us in our subconscious mind we're, we're being so bombarded and overwhelmed by that on a day-to-day -day basis it's like we got to really be conscious of of what we're putting into our minds what we're consuming what's actually coming into us because it's all taking shape. It's all rewiring and reconnecting the circuits in our brains and our minds to, to then program like how we're going to live, how we're going to live afterwards and how we're going to feel throughout those days. Like how we're going to feel on a, on like an hour to hour day to day basis, because it's all like, we're so the good, the good thing about this is that we're so neuroplastic. We're so our minds and our brains are so easily changed that you can fix a lot of problems. You can fix a lot of programming that's off. You can change a lot of habits, a lot of behaviors, a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions because we're so neuroplastic because it's always constantly changing. That's the good news. The bad news is if you don't keep track of that, if you're not on top of those types of things, it's going to reprogram and, re and rewire in a bad negative way. And when that happens, that's when problems like say anxiety, depression pop up. That's when sickness starts to pop up. That's when chronic disease starts to pop up. You get this negative programming, this negative conditioning over time that develops into something it can develop into something good where you have like 
great energy. You have a great flow. You have good charisma. You have um, good feeling, gratitude, you know, happiness. You can have all these good things. But if you don't take care of that, if you're not on top of those types of things, it develops into, into disease or sickness or depression or anxiety or feelings of worthlessness. Like all those types of things will happen over time. They will transpire depending on which way you go. So it's really important to stay on top of those types of things and be positive and, and bring in like good information like we're doing today, like these types of programs, these types of thinking, like these types of things you want more into your life because that is going to change your entire outlook on, on everything. 